you've said that failure um, it makes you stronger. Mm -hmm. Is that something you learned as a player, or is that something you learned after your playing days, more on the business side that you've kind of kept with you? No, through, through playing, yeah. absolutely. It uh, look, we we hone our skills to win, right? If you want to get to the top of the heap, you have to be that way. You have to practice hard. You have to commit your body and your mind and your time to do that. Um, so I did that. Um, and the only way I could learn was learn by my mistakes and absorb those and be open and truthful to yourself, to your caddy, to your coach, to your inner team and say, okay, this is what happened. Why did it happen? Was it all my fault or was it something else? And then you come out a better person on the other side. And, and quite honestly, it applies to every aspect of life, Ryan. It really does. I mean, there's not a day that you can't wake up and learn something new of what some experience, a negative experience or a positive experience. Even when it's positive, there might be a little negative influence in there and you have to remove that as fast as you possibly can. Something you've said you learned to be better at, I guess, after golf was being patient. Oh, yeah. Uh, you, you said you're more patient in business than you were in golf. Looking back, would that patience have, have helped you quite a bit on the golf course? I would say so. I think at the end of the day, I probably would have um, executed a few different shots at the right time. Uh, but look, I was a very confident player. There wasn't a shot on the golf course that I didn't practice, right? So whenever I was presented with a shot, no matter it was a chip shot or a one iron or a three wood or a driver off the deck, I had practiced. So I knew in my mind that I could execute. And a lot of people thought that might have been interpreted, oh, look at this guy, you know, he's a hot shot. He thinks he can do whatever he wants. It's not that. If you want to be, you want to be really, really good, you have to do things other people can't do. One of your latest ventures came to an abrupt stop over the last few months with Fox. Mm -hmm. um, how caught off guard, how surprised were you with Fox's decision to let you go? Totally. Um, and I mean that uh, in 100% sincerity because I'd had conversations with the gentleman who wanted me to come on and be the Fox analyst, David Hill. Um, he wanted me there. He knew that I could deliver the right message that Fox wanted to have delivered. He knew I would apply myself because he knows my DNA, right? He knew that if I was asked to do a job and if I'm going to put my name out there, I'm going to make sure I do my homework. Um, and so, and then I hear from the USGA what a good job, not just me, but we all did. Mm -hmm. um, so, and then I hear from, you always can have your pundits out there, right, in the social media world. And, but I truly believe most of them enjoyed the interaction that I had through the camera to them about what I saw happening on the golf course. There was never any indication that I was going to get the boot up my butt, right? Um, so it came as a total surprise to me. And, um, and the reasons for it are just so off base. You know, call me unpredictable is basically the reason why they let me go. And, and I go, unpredictable? What do you mean by that? And so, look, I can go, we can, this half hour show can go into a two hour <laughs> show if you want to on this very subject. Um, but look, I wish them well. They made a decision that they thought was the right decision. I don't agree with them. Um, you can't um, terminate somebody on a performance of one U.S. Open, right? Especially a U.S. Open at Chambers Bay. Especially a U.S. Open at Chambers Bay where there's a lot of production problems, a lot of production issues. Um, it created, um, um, Anyway, it wasn't what it w we all wanted it to be, but we knew we would get better every production, every show. We'd be slow to get better and better and better. I'm not there. Um, you can ask them the re true reasons why. Um, and, uh, you know, that they, I probably just didn't see eye to eye with, with the producer. That probably boils down to another reason why as well. What's your response when you hear some of the reports, the, the reasoning saying that you were unprepared, you, you, you didn't bring as much to the broadcast as they thought you would, you didn't have as much to say that they thought you would. How do you, how do you respond to that? Well, first of all, if I can show you my preparation. I started being prepared 10 months before Chambers Bay. Um, I actually wanted to do a couple of shows on Chambers Bay um, about what happened to the greens and the, the problems, because I do build golf courses, I do understand agronomy, 
I do understand golf course design philosophy, um, you know, and that's, you know, that's something that I was handcuffed on because I know when we were in negotiations and I spoke to the USGA before I signed on with Fox, that the USGA, uh, Mike Davis, was so excited about hearing my point of view about why the USGA would select the Chambers Bay or why USGA would change some of the golf courses that the US opens on to specifically for the best players in the world. Why, why, why? There's a message you have to deliver out there because I was a player, because I am a golf course designer, and because I have built golf courses where these players have played golf on, right, and continue to play golf on, I think I get it, right? Um, but I was never allowed to do it. Um, they went and hired somebody else to do that. So that was taken away from me. So I'm willing to do it, I want to do it, and at the end of the day, I was handcuffed on that. Um, very disappointing because I was ready for it. And like I said, I, I wanted to do a show on the greens, and at the end of the day, the greens at Chambers Bay were not US quality um, greens for the players to play on. And there was a reason why. There was a very, very good reason why. And it, and it was a reason that the masses should have heard. And it would have taken maybe a 90 second to a three minute show to do it. Um, and it would have been articulated extremely well. That's just one example. I can go into other examples as well. But um, so first of all, I was prepared. That's, somebody told me that the only information I knew was about Australian players. You know, I can rattle down the list with a lot of other U.S. players. I actually went to um, Chambers Bay with a list of 25 to 27 players that I had done my homework on, their caddies, everything, their, their coaches I'd spoken to, 14 different coaches. I can show you, I can happily show you the printout I did on every single one of the players, what they have in the bag, their workout program, what are their goals, how they're going to set it, what are their weaknesses, what are their strengths. So I had these on cue cards in front of me all the time. So anyway, we can, like I said, we can turn a half hour show into a two hour show if you want. <laughs>